John 5. And no, it's not the new guitar player for Motley Crue. And if you get that reference, there's a good chance you're due for a prostate exam. Getting that time. Anyway, this is John the Apostle, the one whom Jesus loved, laid upon his breast at supper time. John chapter number 5. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. What's the moving of the water? It tells you here. An angel went down in a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. That's what caused it to move. And it says, Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. So, you know, we don't see stuff like that today, but that was going on then. It wasn't no big big deal to see stuff like this. And it was a certain season. It wasn't all the time, but whoever got in there first got healed, it says. There was a certain man there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. He lay there for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he says unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? All right, that's still what he's saying to you today. And what we tend to do, this is a perfect picture of trying to give the gospel to somebody that they make excuse and give all these things about why, you know, they're not worthy or don't want to be a hypocrite, but deep down they just don't want it yet. And watch what this man does here. He starts making, he starts doing the same thing. The impotent man answered him and said, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool but while I'm coming, another steps down before me. You know, he just starts making, Jesus didn't ask him. He didn't want his excuses. He just asked him, will you be made whole? And that man was still looking to that pool. You see, a lot of people, when you give them the gospel, they're still looking inside themselves, trying to make themselves better, when all you got to do is let all that go and just trust in the Lord. And then Jesus says unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, took up his bed and walked, and on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day, it is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed wist not who it was. For Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. So he just kind of blended in with the crowd and got away. And that guy really didn't know who he was. And you see these things on the Sabbath all the time. We know that Jesus never sinned, which means he never transgressed God's law. But one of God's laws was keep the Sabbath, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. But all this stuff that he's, you know, you know, taking up a blanket or a, sleeping bag and carrying it a few feet that, that that didn't break the law in god's eyes but the the pharisees and all the religion started putting all these things on people just to you know make their burdens heavier and it, it had nothing to do with god's law it was man's tradition and uh it says afterward jesus finds him in the temple and said unto him behold thou art made whole sin no more lest a worse thing come unto thee the man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered them, My father works hitherto and I work. So the whole rest of this chapter is going to be Jesus. You know, we've done seen him reveal himself as Messiah to that Samaritan woman. He's kind of just letting the cat out of the bag to the rest of them now. Just demonstrating his relationship with the father. You know, the father's in me. He sent me. If you don't believe me, you don't believe him, that kind of thing. Therefore, the Jews sought the more to kill him, not only because he had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do. So that ought to tell you God's heart, the father's heart, when it comes to 
you know, people being sick. I don't know how many times I've heard people that get cancer or some disease and they say, this is God testing me, you know, he's going to work something through me. No, Jesus said, he just said, that's what the father, I, I do what I see the father do. And Jesus, the whole time he was here, went through healing them all. Amen. And a lot of times he heals people and he says, this is of the devil. You know, this woman's been bound by Satan and the work, destroying the works of the devil. So just keep that in mind. He says, uh, for the father loves the son and shows him all things that he himself does. And he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. For as the father raised up the dead and quickens them, even so the son of man, the son quicken whom he will for the father judges no man but hath committed all judgment unto the son that all men should honor the son even as they honor the father he that honors not the son honors not the father which has sent him verily verily i say unto you he that hears my word and believes on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death unto life believing verily verily i say unto you the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the son of god and they that hear shall live he says it's now and uh you know there's examples of him raising the dead physically but you can you can spiritualize that thing too because you know we find out from the apostle paul that we were all dead in trespass and sin and when you hear the voice of the Son and believe, then you've been made alive. Amen. Quicken. For as the Father has life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. <laughs> they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation, condemnation. I can of mine own self do nothing as I hear I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. Bear witness of myself, as a lot of people out there takes it upon themselves to do things of the Lord, and... Uh, and, you know, God didn't call them to do that, yet they're out there doing it. And it'll bear, there'll be a witness somewhere that it's of God because it's, you know, your own witness bears no fruit. They've got to be in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Everything is established. He says, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that bears witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. You sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth, John the Baptist. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say, that ye might be saved. He was a burning and shining light, John the Baptist, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father has given me to finish, the same works that I do bears witness of me. See, the works will bear witness too. Somewhere in here he says, if you don't believe me for the words, sake, believe me for the works sake, the things you see me do. And he says that they bear witness of me that the Father has sent me, and the Father himself which has sent me has borne witness of me. Remember, he said at his baptism, this is my son in whom I and whom I'm well pleased. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape, and he have not and ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he has sent him ye believe not. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. See, they love that law, didn't they? But they love the law so much more that they kind of forgot about the lawgiver. They forgot about God. And the scriptures are the well, testify of Jesus. Here is Jesus. Here is the word in the flesh. But they won't believe him. He says, uh, And you will not come to me that you may have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that you have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, and they had a lot of those, and we still do today, says him, you'll, you'll receive him. 
How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that comes from God only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. And I'm sure he wrote many things probably that alluded to Jesus, but one in particular I can think of as he tells them that uh, there's coming a day when God's going to raise up a prophet likened unto me, and he says, Him you shall hearken to. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? And that's it for chapter number five. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. We'll try and pick up again Monday.